Getting into optimized settings, I think the console version's performance mode is a good place to start for optimizing the game. And we're going to look at those quality settings that have the largest effect on performance. First, let us start with shadows. Here, the PlayStation 5 Pro, for example, in its performance mode, appears to be using the medium shadow setting, which turns off the variable penumbra effect of the shadow. Although the shadow is still quite high resolution and has all the other benefits of virtual shadow maps. The reason why they did this makes sense, as on PC, bumping down to the medium option saves 19% performance, which is definitely something that a mid to low range GPU could use for a big performance win, even though you could imagine a higher end GPU like the 4070 tier I'm showing off here could maybe use the high setting, as it doesn't reduce image quality too much, yet still runs 13% better than Epic. Still, medium for optimized settings for lower end GPUs. The next more visually obvious difference on PlayStation 5 Pro is the foliage quality setting, which in the game's opening can be seen on the leaves found on the ground here. Here, the PlayStation 5 Pro reduces their density a bit, which is an exact match for PC's high setting. In this opening scene, this means a smaller 3% performance win with little difference in visual quality, which is nice to see, unlike medium, which calls quite a lot of the leaves here. I definitely recommend the high in spite of its less than stellar 3% performance win, as the medium or low setting in other scenes really dramatically transforms the game's natural visuals for the worse, with little commensurate frame rate improvement, or at least not as much as you would like. The third setting to watch out for is reflections. Here on PlayStation 5 Pro in its performance mode, we can see that the setting is an exact match for medium. Essentially, the size of this reflective puddle on the ground here is smaller on medium and on PS5 Pro because lumen reflections now apply to less surfaces to save performance based upon their roughness, and the edges of this pool are rougher than the middle part. In general, performance increases are not going to be too huge though from this one, even with scenes with lots of reflections on the ground. Still, it's measurably better, and not a huge loss to visuals, so I recommend medium here. The last setting to watch out for is global illumination. Now here, as per usual, I recommend the high setting as in most UE5 games that use the bog standard presets, as it's the best performance win. The worst aspect of it versus Epic here is typically in the shading quality of the game's hair and areas of direct lighting, as we can see here. Though not everything is clear-cut worse than the Epic setting. On the Epic setting, a number of scenes have strangely less occlusion than the high setting below it in a way that seems almost bugged or unintentional. Sometimes objects look like they're floating more on the Epic setting, so my optimized setting here is high. And like any other UE5 release, the rest of my optimized settings are high as well, as they're using the standard presets here, and the optimized ones in UE5 are indeed high. Altogether, in any given outdoor scene like the one here on an RTX 4060, we can see that the optimized settings improve performance at 1440p native by a massive 57% in this scene. By dropping down to balanced DLSS mode, we see a further improvement over the native plus epic settings by 200%, so three times the frame rate here. So there's a good amount of wins to be had in this game with just a few simple clicks. Using these settings at 1440p with DLSS4 Transformer balanced, forced in the driver, I set out to play a good chunk of the game's beginning on a Ryzen 5 3600 equipped with an RTX 4060 and I utilized the epic texture setting. Although I was uncertain and cautious at first regarding that texture setting, because this 8GB GPU can give me problems usually. Like many UE5 games though, the texture streaming, even when set to this highest setting, wasn't actually a problem for in-game performance. Due to UE5's virtual texturing system, performance tends to not be the issue on 8GB GPUs. Rather, you can see the potential for worse quality textures at times. This could occasionally occur in cutscenes, as I found on camera cuts, where textures could load a bit slowly, but in gameplay, textures were generally always fine at the normal walking pace. Performance-wise, the RTX 4060 held up admirably, I would say, with the settings being used. But like on the base console version, the image quality is perhaps the game's biggest issue on GPUs of this level of performance. There's a number of pain points, like hair being particularly poor. When running around and being GPU limited, typically the FPS was above 60, with heavy areas or certain fights dropping the frame rate into the 50s for extended periods. This is a good VRR experience, of course, when GPU limited, minus those hitches and stutters that I detailed at the beginning of the video. But generally, this game does scale low, and an 8GB GPU and even a Ryzen 5 3600 can generally have a pretty great time here and a good 60 FPS, which I heavily recommend targeting given the game's real-time aspects in its turn-based combat.